Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to plug in, or either with a cable or via Bluetooth, your Switch Joy-Cons in order to use them on your Windows PC. So to do this, we're going to use a program called DS4 Windows, and what this does is it mimics an Xbox controller in order for it to work with all of the different games on your computer because Xbox controllers are already basically supported by virtually everything. And the drivers are built into uh, anything that's at Windows 8 or newer. You already have the Xbox controller drivers built into your operating system. So with that in mind, we're gonna download DS4 Windows. If you Google it, don't go to this first link. I don't know who this is, but as far as I can tell, they're not associated with the actual developer of the DS4 Windows driver. You want this second one that says releases made by Ryochan7 on GitHub. This is the actual current developer of DS4 Windows. And it'll take you to this page on GitHub, which will walk you through the stuff that you need. So to get this to run on your computer to begin with, you're gonna need the .NET framework, which they have linked here at the top, with the most recent version to help you get it all set up. You're gonna want this version here, the .NET runtime x64, which means 64-bit. So grab that one, and then once you've got that, download the DS4 Windows 64-bit down here that says x64. You can either grab the 7-zip version, which is .7z, or the zip file version. It doesn't matter, just the 7-zip one requires you to have the 7-zip uh, program to open it whereas a lot more of the zip file programs will use the regular dot zip. They're, they're four megabytes. I don't think it's gonna be a big hassle either way. So grab whichever one of those 64-bit versions you want, install the .NET framework download that it's gonna ask you, because if I go up here and I click on the x64 version of the .NET framework, it'll ask me to download it and ask me where. Go ahead and download both of these programs, install the .NET framework, and then we'll move to the next step. So we're gonna open up DS4 Windows, which I was already playing around with the latest version a little bit ago, so I'm gonna delete that. And you'll have this zip file in whatever folder you've got it in. So I'm gonna right click this, and I'm gonna extract the contents of this zip file to a folder of the same name. And inside of here will be a whole bunch of different stuff, and it looks confusing at first, but what you want is in the middle, there's this colorful logo, and when you hover over it, it says it's an application and you can run it. That is DS4 Windows. So if you have this installed correctly with the .NET framework and you double click on this, the first thing you'll be prompted with is a little pop-up window asking you where you want to install all of the associated settings and save preferences for DS4 Windows when you're running it. I always put it in the program folder. That way, if anything happens to the program, it starts acting funny or you need to reinstall it because there's a bug or whatever. You just delete the folder and then you don't have to track down all the extra stuff in order to get rid of it. So I'm going to install it in the program folder and now it's going to bring me a convenient pop up. So recently, DS4 Windows changed how they handle it. They used to just sh support all the different controllers out of the box by default. Now you have to enable it. So there's this lovely pop-up window called Enable Devices Mapper Support, and just click the ones you need. So in this case, I need Joy-Con support and maybe Switch Pro Controller support, because if you've got Joy-Cons, there's a good chance, especially if you have larger hands, that you're gonna have a Pro Controller to go along with it. So enable both of those and then click Close, and then the actual program itself should open. Now, there is something missing from the setup these days. There used to be a pop-up that would pop up initially to help you get everything set up. Go to settings, and then down here, go to controller driver setup. There's a little link here on the right-hand side of settings, and that will prompt you with an administrator window. Do you want to continue? Say yes. And then it'll pop open this little prompt here. This is some additional supporting drivers that you'll need in order for DS4 Windows to function. The first one, and really the only one that you tend to need, is the Vision Bus driver here at the top. You're gonna wanna go ahead and click on that. 
download that. It'll automatically download it to your computer and bring up the install menu. Go ahead and run through that. And then that should be done. And then if you're running an older version of Windows, like you're still on Windows 7, because those you those people still exist, and you're missing the, the Xbox 360 drivers, you can click on the second button and it'll take you where you need to go to download and install those. Besides that, there's some couple ep optional drivers down here you can play around with, like the hid hide driver or the faker input driver. They kind of explain what they do, but they're not required, so I'm not going to cover them in this video. Once you're done grabbing the Vision Bus driver, you can close that window and we should be good to go to continue. So the next thing we need to do is connect your Joy-Cons to your computer. You have two options here. If you have the charging controller dock, the one where you can play your games while it's charging and it just docks it like it's a regular controller, you can plug it in with that. It has to be the, the charging one. Or you can just connect it with Bluetooth. I'm not going to cover how to do that in this video or tutorial, but if you're interested in how to do that, I should probably remember to put the link to that video in the video description below. It's a very easy process. You can just connect both of these Joy-Cons to your computer with Bluetooth, although it runs a little bit better when you do it with a cable. So I'm going to plug that in. And then once I've got it plugged in, I'm going to click on the start button to make sure that the program is running. The program oftentimes will start in like turned on, so you shouldn't need to hit the start button, but sometimes it does. So if the bottom corner says, uh, says start, click the start button. If it says stop, it's already running. So now that I've got this plugged in and I hit the start button, you'll now see that both of my Joy-Cons have appeared in the list. The right one is currently at 50% battery and the left one is currently at 75% battery. At this point, there shouldn't be anything else that we really need to do in order to start playing games with this controller. It's already pre-mapped so that each half of the Joy-Con is mimicking the same half of an Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller. And you're probably thinking, well, gee, Larry, that sounds fancy and all, but I kind of want my controller buttons on my controller to match what I'm seeing on screen. How do I put the Nintendo buttons in my game? The shorter answer is you can't, at least not reliably, in a way that's not gonna cause a bunch of hiccups and bugs and drive you crazy and put you having angry comments in my video. Um, because the game themselves don't support this controller, they won't have these button layouts set up in the game to display for you. And DS4 Windows doesn't have some magical overlay that they can put over top of things to like show the different buttons over top of your game. You're just going to have to kind of get a feel for where are the all the Xbox buttons would be as if you were playing on an Xbox controller. Now, if you want to, you can rebind some of these buttons. Like, let's say I want to rebind the right controller. I can find it and I can hit edit. And this will allow us to rebind whatever button we want. So if I want to rebind the A button, I would have to find it on this PlayStation 4 controller. It's a little janky because this was originally designed for use with PlayStation 4 controllers. So you'll have to kind of like say like, oh, what if my controller was a PlayStation 4 controller? So I'm gonna bind the A button, which in this case is the circle button, to something else by clicking on it and selecting what I want to bind it to either from a representation of a keyboard, a mouse, or an Xbox button. Normally it's bound to the B button, but let's say I want to bind it to the L button or the L key on my keyboard. You could click that and it would do the same thing. Or if you click it and you don't want it to be bound to anything because it's being weird, you can click unbind and then it won't be bound to anything. It'll just be a dead button that doesn't do anything. You can also go and create a new profile, like you can make some changes and then you can save it as a new profile. But for the most part, out of the box, it just pretends to be an Xbox controller and that should serve you pretty well for 90% of things. Now, as we exit out here of this tutorial, I wanna make one last note 
I was testing this and it works in some games really well. I, I tested this in Deep Rock Galactic and played a mission and using the Joy-Cons to play in Deep Rock Galactic, it worked really well. Uh, using this controller in Sea of Thieves caused Sea of Thieves to freeze and it caused it to crash. So your mileage may vary when using this controller in various different games. And as a last note, if you find that when you were setting up DS4 Windows, it didn't set up the support or didn't enable support for other types of controllers besides a PlayStation 4 controller, you can find those settings in the settings tab. And then here on the right side is a device options button. Go ahead and click on that. And this window here is where you enable or disable support for other types of controllers besides the PlayStation 4 controller, like the Joy-Cons, the Switch Pro controller, the PS5 controller, and most recent edition, the PlayStation 3 controller as well. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that's been pretty clear on what to do. And I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.